let's look at the wrapper class. The wrapper class Okay, can you list what are the primitive data types in Java? There are eight primitive data types in Java. Can you tell me what are the primitive data types? Kindly participate so that you will get the maximum benefit. So whatever you know, you, you type in. Not a problem. I'm not here to evaluate you. I'm here to help you. Whatever you know, that's fine. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you everyone. Um, I appreciate for the response. Right, you people are right. So, you, there are eight primitive data types. Okay, basically there are three kind of data types. Okay. In integer, the first one is byte, then short, then int, then long. Okay, in terms of, in terms of float, you have float, in decimal point, then double. Then you have character then you have boolean okay now let's look at what is a wrapper class wrapper classes you have a class for every primitive data type okay for int i have integer Okay. So that means if there are many situations like collection classes and all which you will be learning in the next class, okay? Yeah, you will be learning the collections in the next class. <coughs> so the collection classes will take only objects. Okay. It will not take primitive data types. In that case, what you have to do is, you have to use wrapper classes. Okay? So, uh, you have to use the wrapper classes. Wrapper class is a simple class for a primitive data type. For every primitive data type, you have one wrapper class. Okay? For every primitive data type, you have one wrapper class. So, if the object, like if some functionality does not take primitive data type, it takes only objects because it is implementing object-oriented programming, then you can use uh, the like wrapper class for a primitive data type. And like I'll tell you how exactly to use. Okay. Okay, why wrapper classes? Since Java is object-oriented programming language, sometimes it is required to send object instead of a primitive data type. In this case, wrapper classes object is used. That's what I said. For example, in collections like ArrayList, you will learn about these collections little later in the module. Okay, uh, collection classes can only store objects. Here, primitive data type can't be used. In, if integer or character data is to be stored in collections, then its corresponding objects are required. Hence, wrapper classes are created. See, the collection classes like ArrayList, Vector, HashTable, HashMap, Preset, okay, HashSet, 
all these vector properties, all these collection classes, right? It can store only object. It cannot store primitive data type, right? Because it's object oriented programming. So if you want to store primitive data type, how do you resolve this problem? For every primitive data type, there is a corresponding class which is created. If it is int, integer, float, float, char, character, right? I will show you in a while, like, you know, how, what are the primitive data types, okay? John takes a laptop from U India to US. There he finds the battery charging pins are different. He will have to find an adapter which works for USA laptops plug points. He will use the adapter that will change, that will charge the laptop. Here the adapter is like a wrapper class. So you are like you are taking an adapter which fits like you know between the plug point as well as the plug. Okay. So the wrapper class is like the between uh, you know, uh, the collection class as well as the primitive data type. If you look at John meets Jack in a coffee shop. John, Jack wants John's classmate. Jack was John's classmate in college. Hi John, how are you? Do you remember me? I'm Jack, your friend from college. That's a conversation between them. John says, hi Jack, I'm good. It's nice to see you after all these years. What are you doing these days? Then. Jack says, I'm a programmer. I'm working as a programmer with Axison. I have managed to learn Java. What about you? For that, John responds, I'm working as a senior programmer and trainer with Consius. I, I just got a promotion and everything is great. Then, Jack says, then I think you're the right person to help me. I've got a project on wrapper classes. I'm not aware of it. Can you help me out? Yeah, sure. That's what John responds. Then John explains Jack about the wrapper classes. Take an example of this chocolate. The manufacturer wraps the chocolate with foil or paper to prevent it from dust. The consumer takes the chocolate, removes and throws the wrapper, wrapper and then eats it. So there is a chocolate, it's wrapped by a wrapper, right? You just throw the wrapper and take the chocolate out, okay? A wrapper class wraps a data type and gives it an, an object appearances, okay? This object can be used when, wherever the data type is required as an object. Okay, wrapper classes has methods to unwrap the object and return the data type. So basically wrapper classes are wraps the data type. Okay, now let's look at what are the different kind of wrapping classes. Okay, uh, as you mentioned, like these are all the primitive data types, byte, short, int, long, float, double, character, boolean. Each of Java, eight primitive data types has a class dedicated to it. These are known as wrapper classes because they wrap the primitive data type into an object of this class, right? So, and so how exactly you wrap the data into the wrapper class? I'll just show you.
Now can you please look at this portion of the program and can tell me what's happening over here? Only this portion. When you run this program, it prints 40, so it is integer i equal to define, you are directly assigning 10, you are printing the value of i, which is 10, then like, you know, uh, you are defining a primitive data type y equal to 40, you are assigning y to the i, so that means it, uh, the data is been assigned to an object, you are printing i, so which is, you are printing the object i, which is 40 gets printed, after 10, 40 gets printed, the variable i, that is, like, you know, i is assigned 190 again, so I, I assigned to y, so y gets printed 190. So like it prints 10, 40, and 190 is the output. Yeah, see here, 10, 40, 190 is the output. Actually, so Java 1.7 onwards, there is some change, okay, 1.8 if you are using, there will be a change. You will not be assigned integer object directly like this, okay. So what you have to do is, you have to do little differently. <coughs> integer i ob equal to new integer Okay, 10. System IOB, when you print like this, OB, when you print like this, 10 gets printed. You cannot assign it directly from 1.7, 1.8 onwards, right? So, see here, 10 gets printed. And you want to assign from an object to a primitive data type, what you should do? Let's say int I. Uh, i variable, okay, then I will say i underscore ob, you have to get int value, okay, so you have to get the integer value, okay, then i variable, so it will print 10, 10 and 10, okay, this is how you have to use from 1.7, 1.8 onwards, you cannot assign directly, this feature has been removed from 1.7 onwards, okay, 1.8. So you have to allocate memory using new and this way. You can use a wrapper class. Yeah, that answers your question. Okay. Is the wrapper class is clear for you before we move on to the next topic? Okay. Wrapper classes is that for every primitive data type, you have a corresponding class. Why exactly do you need? Because couple of uh, uh, objects, like collection objects, will store only objects because Java is a programming, object-oriented programming, right? Okay. Uh, I hear yes from only five people. Uh, yes, we have many other in the class. Can we have some response from everyone? So that I understand that you understood the concept of wrapper class before we move on. Okay. Thank you so much for responding. Right. Till now we have covered the threading. Okay. What is a thread? How to create a thread? What are the advantages of a thread? And uh, what is start method, run method? What are the different uh, uh, the stages of a thread? That is a new, star, unable, running and all. Then we looked at the wrapper classes. We looked at java.lang also. Now let's move on with other stuff. Okay, few uh, features of wrapper classes. We can use various class methods converting integer to string and also there are a lot of methods inbuilt methods are available. This is one of the way to store the primitive data type into an object, right? The value of is available in all wrapper classes to get the value of given data into the wrapper class data type. It's the same program. You have an integer. You have an integer object. Okay. Then you're printing, printing, printing the integer object. 
then you're converting that integer object to a string also. That is also possible. Just you, I use int value, so it returns the int value. When you say to string, it converts the object to a string. 